Okay, so I promised you that we had a little bit more on distribution. Um, so I, I separated this into two videos for one reason, so that I could spend some more time on that sucker, and so that hopefully you've practiced a little bit about what we talked about, just solving some linear equations before attempting this. Um, not a huge deal if you have it, but I'd just like you to have a, a better grasp on it so this doesn't intimidate you a little bit too much. So anyhow, I want to look at a problem like this one. I'm going to give you one that if you can, I'd like to practice on your own, uh, and then we'll, we'll do it up here on the board. So <clears throat> I made a big deal about identifying what a linear equation was. Well, is this one of them? Does this have an equal sign? Does it have one of the same type of variable all of the places you see it, that variable is raised to the first power. Yeah, it just looks really freaking nasty, okay? So how do you do this without just being overcome with mistakes? Number one, follow the directions. Number two, obey the order operations. That's a big deal. So when we're going through this, we're going to go step by step, but we'll also be talking about how the order operations, the PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, play a part in how we attack this problem. So the first thing we do, of course, identify a linear equation. Uh, after that, we're going to check to see if we need to simplify this equation. Now, when we simplify equations, it's really an expression idea. It's really on one side or the other side. So we're going to look at just the left-hand side. We're not going to look at anything on the right-hand side right now. That's not how simplification works. It's you do one side, you do the other side, and then we start working on the equation as a whole. So let's look at the left-hand side. Do you have to simplify it? Well, simplification means that you might have to distribute. You might have to combine some like terms. You might have to get rid of some fractions or decimals. So right off the bat, we see, yeah, we're going to have to distribute this. Now, a big question that's in a lot of learners' minds is, do I add the 6 plus the 2? Should I be doing that? That's not a distribution question. That's an order of operations question. This is a big deal here. Could we add it? Yes. Would we be right to add it? No. No, we shouldn't add that because of this. Why not? It's right there. You just do it. It's 8. Please let it be 8. That would be awesome but it breaks the order operations. We talked about it a while back, but if you ever, forget the side, we're not looking here, we're looking just here, just here. When you have a number next to a parentheses, you always have a multiplication. Multiplication beats addition subtraction every time at order operations. We have to multiply first. The only way to do it, as I showed you in the previous video, is to distribute that number with its sign to everything inside the parentheses. If you're getting the wrong answer a lot and you're sure that you're doing the right steps, watch this first. If it's an advanced distribution problem, watch that first. Don't be adding the 6 plus a 2. Don't be adding before distribution. That's a bad deal uh, outside the parentheses. So we're going to distribute. So what do you do with the 6? Leave it hanging on. So we're going we're to leave that 6. Positive 2 times positive x is positive 2x. We're going to think positive. We're going to write down plus. Positive 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. We're going to think negative 14. We're going to write down minus 14. That's distributed. That's great. Now, you can choose to work on this side all the way down if you want to, or you can go on to the right-hand side. I'm going to do the right-hand side because I'm, I'm just feeling in a distribution mode. So let's look at it. Man, you should be able to answer this at this point. Are we going to subtract or are we going to distribute? What do you think? If you're thinking distribution, you nailed it because distribution is always going to happen before addition subtraction outside of your parentheses because that's in order operations. Distribution is multiplication. So we're going to leave our 10. When we distribute negative 3, you'll notice how when I'm saying that, I'm always saying negative and positive. It's the way that my, my brain is kind of thinking through the, the rules of multiplication. If I say the signs, I'm more apt to multiply correctly, to not mess up my signs. So I say negative 3, x, 3 times x is negative 3x. I write minus 3x. Negative 3 times negative 3, well, that's why I said it. So negative times a negative, well, that's a positive. So I say negative 3 times negative 3 gives me positive 9. If I say positive 9, I write down plus 9. I hope that's making sense to you. The way that we kind of make our, say things in our heads, 
yeah, you should have voices in your heads with math, uh, helps us out when we're doing the, the rules for addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, even some of these solving equation rules. Just getting that, um, that process down, it really does help. Now, keep on going with this. Yeah, we're simplifying. Yeah, we distributed. Now we check for combining like terms. Do you have any? Remember, combining like terms is a side-by-side -side approach. I'm, I'm going to ignore the side for right now. Look right here. Just answer this question. Do you have like terms over here? Well, let's look for our variables first. Maybe not just jump right into it. Look for your variables first. Do you have, you'll notice I also circle my like terms every single time. That way I can cross them out and not get confused. Do I have like terms with 2x? No, that doesn't count. That's not even there right now. When I'm talking like terms, I'm talking just on one side. Do you have like terms with 2x on this side? No. So we're going to cross it out. We're just going to write down 2x. The reason why we do that is to keep our variables first. If you remember when we first talked about linear equations, your variables are first and then your constants were second. Huge deal? No. No, it's not a huge deal. But it kind of helps to have it organized. After that, we're going to look for our, our constants. Remember, like terms are, hey, they both have to have a variable or they both have to not have a variable. That means every pair of constants is automatically like terms. Circle the like terms with their sign. So we got 6, we got negative 14. Yeah, we think negative 14. What's 6 plus negative 14? Combined like terms always addition type of move here. So they have different signs. You subtract, keep the sign of the absolute value bigger number, or use your calculator. 6 minus 14, you're going to get negative 8. If we say negative, we're going to write down minus. Let's think about this for a second. Walk yourself through this just one more time. Do a 10 second recap for yourself, okay? Look through it. Do you understand why we distributed? Do you understand that these were like terms, but these were not like terms? Do you understand why we had to combine them to get two terms on one side instead of three? Because if you start trying to add and subtract right now, it's really confusing. We should not be dealing with an equation before we've completely simplified. And if we've completely simplified, you should have at most two terms here and two terms here. That's how you know that you're simplified. You have no more than four terms. So we're step one done. We're now we're step two. So let's look at step two. Step two was eliminate the smaller variable. Now smaller, when we say smaller, we're not talking absolute value smaller anymore. I know that's kind of confusing. We're getting back and forth between these thoughts. But when we're thinking a smaller variable, we're thinking number line smaller. Uh, a positive number is always larger than a negative number on a number line. So when we're getting down to here, I see a 2x minus 8. Simplified, no like terms. I see a negative 3x plus 19. Simplified, no like terms. If you ask yourself, are there like terms, you have to ask it this way. Are there like terms on this side? Are there like terms on this side? So there are no like terms. After that, we count how many variables we still have. If there's two of them, I want you to get rid of the smaller one. Notice how the toughest part of this really is distributing and combining like terms appropriately. You can do that. Man, there's only th let's see, two steps, three steps. Add or subtract for your variable, add or subtract for your constant, and divide. That's it. Add, subtract, add, subtract, divide. That's all you got to do after you've combined like terms. So we're going to choose to get rid of the smaller variable, not out of necessity, not because you have to do it that way, but because if you get rid of your smaller variable, you'll never have to divide by a negative at the end. That's why. And, and let's face it, signs are our biggest weakness, uh, getting the wrong sign. And so if I can avoid some sign errors for you, I'm just going to do it. So to avoid a sign error, instead of subtracting 2x, we're going to add 3x. Remember, we want to get rid of the entire term. So the entire variable says get rid of the entire 3x. We're not trying to get ones here. We're trying to get zeros. Zeros get rid of terms completely. Dividing, getting ones, still gets a term in there. Now, what's kind of cool, I mentioned in the last video, is when you start getting rid of entire terms, you also start creating like terms on the other side of your equation. These aren't like terms right here, but these are like terms. That's neat. And these are also like terms. On the right-hand side, man, we're going to get 19. Negative 3x plus 3x, that's zero. That's exactly why we did that. 
zero plus 19, that's why we chose to add and subtract, was so that we don't have variables still left in there. We don't have terms, we have zero. Zero plus your number gives you just your constant number back. On the left-hand side, now that we've created some like terms, man, 2x plus 3x, you have 5x. And you're pretty much home free. At this point, since we've distributed, we've combined like terms, we've got rid of our smaller variable, now we're down to the point where you should have at most three terms. So when you combine like terms, you have at most four, two on each side. After you get rid of one of your variables, you have at most three terms, one with a variable and a constant, and one with just a constant. Please notice something. Your variable side always drives your problem. You don't even have to look here to see what to do. You only look at your variable, you get rid of your constant first. We're going to add 8. After you get rid of your constant term, you should have at most two terms. You should actually have exactly two terms. You should have a variable term on one side with just a coefficient, if anything, and then you should have a constant on the other side. The last step is always divide. So the only way to get rid of a coefficient, the number attached to a variable by multiplication, is to divide both sides by exactly the same number. We're trying to get zeros here. We're trying to get zeros here. You're trying to get ones at the very last step because one times your x is going to give you back your x. Show your work on both sides, sure. Don't do little errors like me. We're done. We get 27 over 5. Is it simplified? Is it improper? That's fine. As long as it's simplified, there's nothing we can do to simplify that further. You could do 5 and 2 fifths or 5.4, that's okay too. Uh, but you, you leave that just like that, you're going to get full credit unless your teacher specifically asks you to do a mixed number or a decimal. So you're good on that one. Uh, I'm going to put one more on there. Of course, I'd like you to give it a try. Uh, this is your chance to, the only way that, if, if you were my students in my actual physical classroom, right now we'd be doing guided practice. And what I would be doing is I would give you some a problem to do, and you've seen me do it on other videos probably, if you've watched some other stuff. I'd be walking around the room, I'd be circulating, checking to see what you're doing. I can't do that right now. So the only way I can get you to participate is by having you, asking you to do it on your own. Pause the video, that's okay. You don't have to watch me all the time, every second. Pause it, I'll still be there, I promise. Um, and, and try this on your own. If you get it wrong, who cares? You're just learning, but learn from your mistakes. This is part of taking good notes, having mistakes on them and correcting them and saying, oh, watch for this. I did this before. Now I'm going to try to get it right the next time. If you can, put your notes away right now. If you can, put your notes away right now and try this on your own. If you can't, that's okay. All right, you're still learning it, but let that be a kind of a note in your head that I need to practice this more, not that I watch someone do it once so I have it, okay? Try that on this. I'll make one real quick mention before you actually pause the video and do it. Your distribution is going to be your first step. I think we all know that. When you distribute this, it's pretty clear. When you distribute here, it might not be, but think about what number is always in front of a variable or always in front of a parentheses, and that will give you a, a good kind of hint. So pause me right now if you can, try this on your own, and then come back to it. I'm going to get started on it in just a second. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing we're doing, hey, linear equation, absolutely. You got one variable. It shows up three times. That's okay. You still have one variable raised to the first power. Now, our step one says we're going to have to simplify. Simplify means distribute. It means combine some like terms if you have to. It means get rid of fractions and decimals if we have those. We're not there yet. But it definitely means distribute. If you've got a little negative one out there, we would distribute to both of those terms. Hey, negative 1 times positive z, that's negative z. Write it down. Negative 1 times positive 4, that's negative 4. Since it's a second term, we say negative, but it changes to a minus. So negative 4 becomes minus 4. 
After that, there's nothing to distribute here. If you want to distribute a positive one, I mean, I guess you can, but it's not gonna change anything. That was just holding this expression together and saying, yeah, you got plus three Z, you also have a plus one, but there's nothing to actually distribute besides positive one there. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna keep going with distribution. I'm in the mode. I'll circle my number in front of my parentheses with my sign. Then we're going to distribute, pass out cards through multiplication to every term, every player in there. Negative 2 times positive z is negative 2z. Let's write it down. Negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2. Hey, you said negative, but write down a minus. After that, what you, what you should have done is distribute and then look for like terms. Like terms is always side by side. So let's look here first, just for funsies. Do you have any like terms here? Well, I'm looking, one's got a variable, one doesn't, not like terms. All your like terms have to be the same exact variable, raised to the same exact power, and be on the same exact side of the equation. So here, no like terms. Here, yeah, I do. Now, you don't have to do this, but I like to. I like to put things in order. So I like my variables first. Doesn't matter where you start, really, but let's start with our variables. I'll circle my two variables. Those are like terms. They both have the same variable raised to the same power. They both have variables. That, though, that's weird. Negative z means negative 1z. So negative 1z, positive 3z, calculator, head, whatever you want to do, you need to be getting positive 2z out of that. I'm going to cross them out so I don't get lost. And then I'm going to look for my constants. Constant has negative 4 and positive 1. Well, constants are automatically like terms because they have the same variable. None. They don't have variable. That's okay. They are like terms. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Say negative, I write minus. On the right-hand side, yeah, we really didn't do anything. But we're just going to rewrite it. So step one's done. You have distributed, you've combined like terms, you have four terms. You can have at most four terms after distribution and combined like terms. If you made it that far on your own, that's awesome. It means you learned a lot about distribution and combined like terms. Great. Next up, we're going to look for the smaller variable if we have two variables. And if we have four terms, you darn well better have two variables, one on each side. Our smallest variable here is negative 2z. So when we get rid of negative 2z completely, it has to be addition subtraction. It has to be on both sides of your equation. It's going to create some like terms. It's going to eliminate an entire term. Zero, look, zero. Zero minus two is negative two. got to get the negative. And it's going to say, hey, you went from four terms down to three terms. Now, let the side where your variable is drive your problem. How we drive the problem is ignore this side, look here, and just let this guy play Simon Says. This guy's just going to play along. Uh, the left-hand side says, I need to get rid of my constant before I divide. Division is your last step. Let's add 3. Negative 3 plus 3, or minus 3 plus 3 is 0. We want zeros with addition subtraction. Right-hand side, we get 1. Your very last step is to divide both sides. How do we get rid of the coefficient since it's connected by multiplication? Divide both sides by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. We want 1's with division because 1 times your variable gives you back your variable. Nasty to check. Nasty to check, but that's the correct answer. If you have to check your work, you have to do it here before you start doing any garbage. Because if you made a mistake from here to here, it will not show up if you check it here. Check your answer here. Use your calculator if you want to. But what should happen is you plug in 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 fourth, and you get the same thing, same exact number on both sides of your equation. If you can do that, you know that you're right. Um, we're going to end there. This is a short little piggy about um, linear equations when you have some advanced concepts. So now you're, you're fully versed on how to solve linear equations. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to solve linear equations that have fractions in them. I'm going to end this. This is just awesome. If you don't like fractions, watch the next video. It's got fractions. I know. I'm going to teach you how to kill fractions and decimals in the next video. It's going to be fun. So I'll see you next time.